Hi, welcome to Around the World in 80 Drinks. You know, Scots have been brewing beer for 5,000 years, so I think it's safe to say they know a thing or two about one of my favorite subjects. We're on the Royal Mile here in Edinburgh, Scotland, to speak to James, the cask master at Deacon Brodie's Pub, about trying some of their cask ales. Now, cask ales are different from regular draft beer in that they are a live, unfiltered, unpasteurized product pulled from a cask rather than pushed out of a keg with gas. I better let James explain more about that and what he does. Each pub has a cask master. Um, they are responsible for looking after the beer within their own business. Um, and they should be responsible for racking all the beer in the business, looking after them, washing, cleaning the pipes and everything themselves, and they should be on top of the cellar at all times. I'm the district cask master, so it's my job to ensure that they're doing their job within the business. The, the hand pull pumps the beer up. So that is the beer engine as we call it. it you, when Every time you pull it, it pulls a quarter of, to half a pint out of the barrel and into the line. Um, the ales are served at 11 to 13 degrees, whereas all the cake beer we have on normally would be served right below 5 degrees. If you chill these too far, you'll, you'll develop what's called a chill haze and the yeast will go a bit strange and it will drop out of solution and it will maybe look a little bit like this one, but this one's fine because it's a wheat beer, it's supposed to be like that, but a lot of them you can get little bits floating around and stuff. And that's in every cask, it's in the bottom of every barrel. These are live yeast. Live yeast, all of them, all of these beers are live. Um, that's the main difference between cask ale and any other beer. Um, the, the product is a live product, there's still live yeast in it, it's not been pasteurised, there's no filtration been before it was put in the barrel or anything. The only thing we add really is finings, which all that does is it's an Isinglass fining they're called and that will make the yeast and all the other debris that are in the barrel, after it settles down for a day or two they will drop to the bottom, the proteins will bind and they'll drop to the bottom of the barrel and you'll end up with a layer of sediment on the bottom of the barrel. And that's when you know you're at the bottom of the barrel as you start sucking that out. You aim to sell a cask within three to five days. Three is optimum. By, by, by day five, it'll be starting to taste a bit tired. Okay, so we've got Nicholson's Pale Ale here. Um, it's our brand ale, so um, you can only get it in any of our pubs. Um, brewed at St. Austell in Cornwall, which is about as far away from here as you can get. Uh, it's quite an, a dark pale ale for a pale ale. For James me. describes for us six of the cask ales they currently have on tap. He talks about the different attributes of each and where they're brewed. We do our best to pick out the different aromas and flavors. Citrus or mango. It's almost like an amber color. The licorice or vanilla. It's not bad on a hot summer day. Fruity smell. I really like it. Not a fan. I like it. It's quite smooth. I like it, it's quite nice. It's nice, it's really nice. As he mentioned, the ales are served at the same temperature as the cellar, between 10 and 13 degrees Celsius, and there is no CO2 added for carbonation. The head on the beer comes from the gases produced naturally from the fermenting yeast. After sampling them all, Katie's favorite was Stewart's 80 Shilling. I, however, failed the Scots and chose an English ale called Charge. If you're interested, please click on the subscribe button below. And for more of our videos on Edinburgh, you can click on these as well. Thanks for watching.